Um, my philosophy was a very simple one. I, um, and this is where I think film plays a big part in my life. I, I, Rudy was one of my favorite films growing up. But after watching that film, I come to understand if I could work that hard every day, um, with the, being blessed with the physical tools that I have, what would my career be? And I made a promise to myself from that day that I was going to work that hard every single day so that when I do retire, I have no regrets. And that was the most important thing for me, is to leave no stone unturned, get better every single day. And if I lived that way, then over time, you know, I'd have something that was beautiful. And that was my philosophy. It seems like a pretty simple one, but you know, if you live your life to just get better every single day, do that for 20 years, I mean, what do you have? Yeah, well, Phil introduced meditation to us when he came to our team in 99, 2000. And um, it was something that I instantly gravitated to because I could see the effects. Uh, you, I used to watch, you know, studying the games, the Bulls teams, and um, you know, watching their demeanor, watching their composure playing in a tough place in like Utah during the finals and being down 17. But everybody was like this. You couldn't tell if they were down 17 or up 20 or a tie game. It never changed. And I was wondering why the hell that is. And that's when I started doing more research. And when Phil came, I immediately gravitated to him and found myself accepted the challenge of finding what that space is. And for the 81 point game, man, to be honest, I was I wasn't even thinking about the game. My knee was hurting so much. Um, I didn't know then, but you know, I had a flap of joint, uh, a cartilage stuck in my joint line. And so my mind was really trying to go to a place where I don't feel that pain. And uh, the game started, and because of that, I was just in a different space. I wasn't worried about what was to come. I wasn't worried about what just happened. I was just here. And when you're just there in the moment, playing plays right in front of you, your focus is heightened because nothing else matters. Well, I mean, here, here's why practice was important to me. Not from the, just the standpoint that I enjoyed playing. Like, I enjoyed being there. Um, I enjoyed getting better. But as a leader of a team, it's also your responsibility to elevate the rest of the guys. And what people tend to get stuck on a lot, saying, okay, the way to make players better is to pass them the ball when they're open. It's a very trivial way to look at it. What you have to do is you have to get them emotionally to want to be better. You, want, you have to get them to an emotional space where they wake up every morning driven to be the best version of themselves. Right? How do you do that? And in practice, for me, it was a chance to, to drive them, to challenge them. Right? If you're, and this is where you have to know your teammates. Because if it's late, you just had a back-to-back, -back and we had practice the next day, and you show up, and guys don't feel like going through the motions, don't feel like practicing. It's important to know each and every one of them individually, personally, because then you know what nerve to touch. Some guys, it's like, okay, come on, let's, you know, we can do this. That'll get them going. Other guys, no. You got to figure out what button to push. You know, Powell is always Spain. If I tell them how they lost in a gold medal to us and how they're going to lose again, I'm going to beat your ass in practice just like I beat you in a gold medal game. Oh, that, oh, he'd hate that. <laughs> he'd hate that. But that's what practice was. You have to drive them. You absolutely have to. And if practice is more intense and harder than a game seven will be, then a game seven will be easy. But if it's not, then that's when teams start folding and capitulating. You no, know, I, you know, I always dreamed as a kid that you know, it was possible to score 80 or 90 or 100. I always just like... I had a dream. You know, like sometimes you lay down in bed and you visualize things. And you just kind of, you know, just, that's how, that's at least how I would go to sleep. I'd lay down and I'd imagine playing for the Lakers and I'd imagine what the uniforms looked like. I'd imagine what we'd be playing and, you know, the smell of the arena and all sort of stuff. And I would see myself, you know, getting hot, you know, and, and score 10 straight points. And then, but in the dream, like, why would you ever interrupt that? Like, you're not going to have a dream and be like, okay, and then he misses his next six. Like, it's not going to happen. So you just keep dreaming and dreaming and dreaming. And before I go to sleep, I'm like at 120 points, you know? And so, and so when you grow up, 
downloading that into your brain over and over and over. And then, you know, that summer, I made a thousand shots a day. A thousand, right? That's on top of weight training and my conditioning. I made a thousand shots. And it weren't just shots. It were shots that you saw in that game. They were specific shots. I mean, it was coming out of the corner, going to the pinch post, footwork in the post, coming off the screen. It was very specific. So when you download that into your system and you go out on the in court, you're just executing things that you've done thousands of times before, and you have that dream, then that becomes possible. That would be the way you would express it. Sure. Well, no, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, that's the trick, isn't it? It's, it's finding what you love to do. When we talk about hard work all the time, it's like, man, if you got to get up every single morning and remind yourself how hard you need to work, you probably need to choose another profession. You know? Because that shouldn't be there. Because I, I wake up in the morning excited to get to it. You know, if I'm not training, I'm missing it. I'm not watching a game of basketball. I miss it. I mean, there's no place I'd rather be. And if you have that feeling, then you're truly doing what God has put you on this earth to do.